Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Encouraging Word. My name is Jeremy Henderson, and I'm the pastor of the Butler Church of the Nazarene. I'm also blessed to be able to bring you an encouraging word from God's Word, the Bible, each week. Now, I wonder if you've noticed it yet. And I guess I should probably mention what I mean. Um, we've entered into the election season, haven't we? Debates, newspaper articles, interviews, television, social media, all of it is filling up with what I call the respectable sin of slander. And what I mean by that is that we as Christians, by and large, we've learned to tolerate and even sometimes celebrate the practice, particularly if it's being used against our enemies or our opposites. Now, sadly, if we're not careful, we as Christians can actually follow the pattern of society that's raging against what is wrong outside of our group while failing to pay attention to what is dreadfully wrong inside of our group. In other words, it's really easy to turn a blind eye to our own sins while seeking out and publicizing the sins of others. Politics is full of such practices. So, let's talk about slander. What is it? Well, it's to talk against someone or to speak in such a way as to basically unjustly degrade or destroy someone's character or reputation. Uh, we slander someone when we gossip about them, when we spread lies about them, or we talk maliciously about them to other people. But one of the areas that I'm afraid that many of us are guilty of is just simply repeating stories about the wrongs of other people in a way that, well, let's be honest, it doesn't build them up. And to the extent that we have stained our hands with slander, we need to heed the exhortation of James chapter 4, verse 8 that says, Cleanse your hands, you sinners. And we need to make sure that we are growing in our ability to recognize and put to death sinful practices in our lives. Now, I imagine at this point, maybe someone might be thinking, oh, come on, Pastor Jeremy, what you're talking about, it's not just, it's not such a big deal. I mean, everybody expects us to talk about politics and politicians this way. And of all the sins that are out there, this one's got to rank pretty low. Well, let's think about that. Let's hold on for a second. Did you know the Bible is not ambiguous about slander? God told the Israelites very early in their history in Leviticus 19.16, You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not stand up against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord your God. In Psalm 50, God identifies slander as deceitful speech. That is an expression of the inherent wickedness of men and women when he says, you give your mouth free reign for evil and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother and slander your own mother's son. If this weren't enough, uh, the book of Proverbs, it actually has at least 60 references to how we speak, how we use our speech, and it specifically confronts slander in several passages. Uh, for example, Proverbs 10.18, it reads, The one who conceals hatred has lying lips, and whoever utters slander is a fool. Now, lest we think this is merely just an Old Testament thing, we need to recognize that Jesus, he spoke pretty clearly about our words. He said, I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give an account for every careless word they speak. That verse alone should give us all reason to pause and to think before we speak. 
James, the half-brother of Jesus, the leader of the early church in Jerusalem, was concerned with how believers like you and me handled our speech and our conversations. In fact, nearly one-fifth of his letter in the New Testament concerns the use of our speech in one way or another because, according to James, if anyone thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, this person's religion is worthless. So clearly from both the Old Testament and the New, teaching on slander is firm. It is a sin. It shouldn't be dismissed, nor should it be glossed over. So here's where it gets really practical for us. It's easy to look at this from a 30,000 foot view on issues and people far away. But slander happens every day close to home. So does gossip, spreading stories, malicious talk about other people. You see, the effects of slander are as far reaching as one pastor discovered. A pastor had accepted a call to a new congregation, had been in serious decline for decades, and the pastor and the church board came together and they began to implement some changes in the church in order for them to reach their community for Christ. Now, one member of the congregation was none too pleased about all the changes that were happening to her church. And so she started gossiping about the pastor and about the pastor's family. And at first, it was just in the foyer after church to a couple of friends. But soon, her slander spilled over into her conversations on the phone and with people in the community. And as the pastor continued working to try and build relationships and reach the community for Christ, there was a great resistance that was put in the pastor's way. He couldn't break through. And not knowing what was going on, the pastor prayed for the Lord to reveal what was happening. And about that same time, the woman who had been doing all the gossiping, all the slandering, well, she came under conviction while reading her Bible. And though it was difficult, she knew the Lord wanted her to go to the pastor and to confess her sin, and so she did. And she asked the pastor to forgive her. Now, of course, the pastor forgave her. And the woman was still very remorseful. And not knowing what else to say, she asked if there was anything that she could do to fix what she had done. And the pastor said, Well, yes, I'd like you to go and get five feather pillows and take them to the top of the city watchtower or excuse me, the city water tower. <laughs> and then I'd like you to open up the pillows and scatter the feathers to the wind. Now the woman thought this was kind of an odd request, but she agreed and she did as the pastor requested. And after doing so, she came back to the pastor and she asked if there was anything else that she could do. And then the pastor said yes. There's one more thing I'd like you to do. I want you to go gather up all those feathers from those pillows that you released. And then I want you to put them back in the pillows. Now, the woman was taken aback. She, she was beside herself and she said, Pastor, I, I can't do that. The feathers will have spread all over the city. In fact, some of them probably spread all over the county. The pastor said, you're right. And then the truth hit the woman. The truth about what she had really done. She'd done the very same thing through her words and her influence. And once again, she apologized to the pastor. And she committed herself to him. She said that she would do her best to go to each person that she had spoken to, and she would ask their forgiveness for the slander and gossip. She would confess her sin. She would right the wrong. You know, friends, the respectable sin of slander really isn't respectable at all. It drags a person's identity, and reputation, and character through the mud. 
and once unleashed, the feathers of slander, they can't be put back into the pillow. And ultimately, it's not just a person's reputation that gets called into question, that gets dragged through the mud. It's the gospel. Can I ask you a question as we close? <laughs> I'm going to anyway. How's your speech been lately? Have you been building people up in the minds of others? Or have you been tearing them down? Have you been sharing stories that you don't have the full story on? Friends, all of us, we need to commit to tame our tongues. We need to covenant with the Lord. We need to give our tongues to Him and ask the Lord to sanctify our words for His glory. Let's all take the time to think before we speak so we can glorify God in our conversations. Well, that's it for today. If you don't have a church family that you're a part of, I'd like to invite you to join me at Butler Church of the Nazarene. Our Sunday morning worship service begins at 10.30 a.m. We also have discipleship classes for adults, teens, and kids at 9.30 a.m. We're located at 110 West Nursery Street in Butler, Missouri. And I know if you'll come, you'll discover a place and a group of people where you really know that you belong. If you're unable to uh, be with us on site, I'd like to invite you to join us online for our worship service at 1030. And you can do that through our Facebook live stream, or you can check out our live stream on our YouTube channel. God bless you all. I want you to remember God loves you and you belong at Butler Church of the Nazarene. Have a fantastic rest of your week.